Heavy. Bored. Heavy. I am heavy, heavy, heavy. Bored. November 18th, 2023, Frank Bedard is a poet whose name is tossed around a lot in contemporary poetry as one of the living masters of the craft. Perhaps it comes as a surprise to some listeners, or perhaps not, that I have not always enjoyed his work from a distance. Much of his praise, more from his perceived reputation than the actual work on the page. But Bedart is one of the most recognized and celebrated contemporary poets. But he's never been one to particularly tickle my fancy. Stardust, his collection of poems from 2005, is no exception, listeners. I had first read this collection in 2013 as an undergrad student, and it was amusing, to say the least to see some of my younger self's notes on the page, still there. Some I still agree with, others I don't. It's strange how that works out when it comes to older versions of ourselves. A theme Bedart touches on in this collection, in fact, and I have to say, I am torn, listeners. I am torn between asking for recommendations of poetry books that I will not feel disgusted by while forcing myself to read them, and I'm considering taking a break from reading poetry altogether and writing these sorts of long-form reviews at all. Admittedly, I am not in the best space when it comes to poetry. I find it hard to read. Really, a lot of it is hard for me to read, mostly because of how boring it is, how meaningless, how bland and uneventful I find almost everything I read. But I do it for you, dear listeners, and Bedart fits that bill, in my view. His poems always reaching for something big and expansive, but rarely achieving it. The accomplishments all striking me as indulgence. The spacing out of the lines, a choice I see little regard in. Only its page-level aesthetics interesting. Nothing more. Perhaps I should be less harsh, but I find it difficult to be forgiving. This collection, Stardust by Frank Bedart, was nominated for the National Book Award the year it was published, not winning it, but still. I can't remember all the books that were on the shortlist that year, but I somehow doubt that Bedart's collection in his older age was worthy of such a title. Based on what I've read in this collection, it's hard for me to realize what was motivating the committee to award this book. And I could only assume reputation. Bedart's reputation doing most of the work, particularly in his older years, isn't unusual when handing out the big prizes. As many listeners will know by now, this isn't uncommon at all. And, more importantly, it isn't necessarily unearned either. The reputation, I mean. But this is a trend I want nothing more to do with. Awarding writers based on reputation and not what's on the page. It's a laziness in the rooms where these decisions are made. Excuse making. Because to use what's on the page, not the poet's reputation or race or sexual orientation, is harder than to just lazily evaluate a work of art from much easier political frameworks that are already pre-established. 
Relying on other things and past works of art instead of what is on the page right in front of us right now. It's a coping mechanism. But this trend continues undeterred. If you're hearing this, it's because you are listening to the free public feed of Heavy Board to get complete, uncensored, uninterrupted, full access to this podcast. Become a subscriber at patreon.com slash heavy board. That's right. Heavy board is made possible by subscribers like you. For less than one cup of coffee per month, you will receive private access to uncensored full length episodes, jerk shop, heavy bonus content, subscribers only AMA episodes, bonus extended interviews, and more. Come join the conversation today at patreon.com slash heavyboard.